Morning everyone, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Longville Woods. And welcome back to Mike's tips on squirrel photography. Now, I haven't been down to photograph the little fuzzy guys in a while. So I thought I would bring the camera out and uh, see what we can see now. It's the first bank holiday weekend in May and it's the Saturday, so I'm hoping there's quite a few people that are rather hungover or have gone away, so the woods will actually be quite quiet. I've seen a few people down here, but, you know, hopefully they'll uh, disperse in a bit. You can see as well, it's quite bright and sunny today, which could be a help, it could be a hindrance now. Yeah, we're gonna have a wander through see if we can find any of my little fuzzy friends got me a bag of peanuts i'm just hoping that there's not too many people with dogs off their lead scaring the squirrels now there's a couple of points that i kind of wanted to touch on with tips for squirrel photography um, that i probably didn't necessarily touch on in the video that i did about a year ago now that's a long while. Um, now, what I will also say as well is, last time I came down here, I was using the 7D Mark II Canon. This time, I'm gonna be using the Sony a7R IV. First time I've ever used it for anything like this. Now, the lens I'll be using as well, it's only a 70 to 200, and it is, it's an adapted Canon 7200F4, non-IS. Now what I can do with the Sony as well is I can put it into crop mode, which means it's got a one and a half times crop, which means it's what, 300 mil at the long end, about 105 mil at the short end. So technically it's almost like a 100 to 300. Um, not ideal, not ideal. I'd like a longer lens. I want to do a bit more wildlife photography, you see, so I want to look for something more like a 150 to 600 with the Sigma. Obviously, Sigma fanboy here. So yeah, first tip then, get a lens with some decent reach. Now, I'm not overly concerned about my reach down here because I come down here pretty much every day, every weekday, not weekends, and feed said squirrels so they are quite familiar with mrs s and i as i've said before not only that as well um there is a lot of youngsters a lot of juvenile squirrels down here at the moment and they're quite scatty so i'm hoping they'll come close but not too close so yeah we'll have to see how that turns out but yeah uh i'm gonna crack on let's go find us some squirrels
Okay, so one of my first tips for today is don't be afraid to get down low. To get the shot. So what we're looking at here is almost the squirrel's perspective. So you want it as natural as possible. Now don't get me wrong, you can do when they're up the trees and stuff, but when you've got a squirrel that's running along the ground like this, you want to try and almost get that perspective rather than looking down at the squirrel. So yeah, get down low wear scruffy clothes so i've got a cheap jacket on that i'm not bothered about chucking in the wash i'm also actually wearing the same trousers that i was wearing yesterday when i went for my foggy walk because i've got a bit of grub on the bottom but knowing that i was going to be coming out and doing this i decided to just wear the same ones rather than getting two pairs dirty so yeah get down low get down to the squirrel's eye line if you can and yeah fire away Okay, so next tip then, now it's just gone a bit calm and not so manic with squirrels, is do not sacrifice your shutter speed. Now, it's easy to say, oh, you know, it's a bit dark, so I'll decrease my shutter speed. But the one thing I will say is, you are better off sacrificing your ISO than you are sacrificing your shutter speed and also your depth of field as well is quite key. Because if you, as you can see from these little guys that are just coming towards me, They're quite erratic. And there was literally a squirrel on my phone tripod there. That was actually really cute. I wish he'd have popped his head up in the, uh, in the picture. It's this little guy here. He's ever so curious. You coming over, bird? Uh, this this other little guy just here. See, he's more nervous. So you need to have that really high shutter speed. Now I'm currently shooting on one six hundred and fortieth of a second, which 
is really pushing my ISO up. Now, what I have done is I have set the camera to auto ISO to accommodate keeping that high shutter speed. But I have also set it so that there is a one-stop um, exposure compensation. So that it doesn't overexpose the shot. That's the last thing I want to do. So, yeah, do not sacrifice your shutter speed at all when photographing these erratic little sausages. Look at them. Here you go, bud. Bye bye. So, yeah, do not sacrifice it. Okay, just a bit of a lull in squirrel activity because there's been a couple of dogs running around off their leads with absolutely zero recall at all. Um, yeah. If he's not coming back, put him on a lead. <sighs> Crazy. But yeah, one of the other things... Oh, little guy's just come out to say hello. A couple have started to appear now. Sorry, camera's probably all over the place. Well, I'll just give some nuts to these guys. I can hear some dogs barking, so if they're off the lead, I don't want the squirrels to just be loitering around and get caught out. Um, <clears throat> yeah, go back to the last bit, the last tip I spoke about, about not sacrificing your shutter speed. What I would say is do sacrifice your ISO. Now, the thing with the adapter that I've got for my 70 to 200 on Sony, They've all started to come back out now, typically. It's all right, they can just have peanuts for the minute. Um, is that even if I wanted to, I cannot actually drop down the aperture below F9, else it won't use continual autofocus. There's another dog now, no lead. Fortunately, not chasing around stuff, but yeah. Um, yeah, so I've got to keep my aperture at f9, so I couldn't use like a shutter priority. Um, and obviously I need to keep that shutter speed high, so the option for me then is to use an auto ISO. Now, the Sony is fantastic at handling higher ISOs, um, and most modern cameras are, to be honest with you. So if you're gonna sacrifice any of the exposure elements, part of your exposure triangle sacrifice your ISO because your camera's ability nowadays to handle high ISOs is fantastic there's a little bird just landed on something over there and I can't see what it is it doesn't look like a robin or a sparrow though I don't think it will come close enough for me to capture it on the camera, not with a 70 to 200. There it goes. Um, so yeah, sacrifice your ISO. You can correct ISO easy in, in post-processing as well. You can use Photoshop, you can use Lightroom. Um, Topaz have also got a denoise kind of thing. I can't remember if that's the name of it, but I, have I haven't used it. 
but I have used Topaz Lab stuff before um, for enlargements, things like that. So, oh, and a sharpening one as well I've used as well. So, yeah, I think they've got a denoiser. It might be part of one of their current ones. I can't remember, but Topaz Lab's a good, good quality. So, yeah, there you go. Don't sacrifice your shed speed. Sacrifice your ISO. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this up soon because I'm starting to get hungry because I've had no breakfast. Unlike this lot, who have had plentiful, I think it's the same squirrels that have just been coming back and getting the peanuts off me. There's one I know that definitely is just in the tree just next to the camera who keeps taking the same, uh, who keeps coming down and taking peanuts off me. Um, here he comes again. Go on, little one. So yeah, um, one more tip that I'm gonna give you now is really utilize a lot of the modern technology. Oh, this one's a real cute one. He's got a mustache. Not seen him before. Um, utilize modern technology and modern autofocus systems. Sorry, you know I'm prioritizing the photography here. Um, he's a little bit scatty. He can have a peanut. Yeah. Things like the IAF tracking for animals. Absolutely fantastic. I've been using it today and it's been a bit hit and miss, to be honest with you. Sometimes it latches on, other times it doesn't. But I also think that's partially down to the really strong light that's coming through the tree canopy and causing specular highlights because the camera is literally bouncing in and out of focus. Here's my little friend. <laughs> Go on, buddy. Good lad. Um, Anyway, yeah, sorry. So, the IAF tracking, as I said, I've had hit and miss results with it today, to be honest with you. But I think that's partially down to the fact of these specular highlights everywhere. It's as they're going from in and out of the shadows, it's probably made it quite difficult. Um, but it is a brilliant tool to have. Um, I found that the results have been better when the squirrels have been closer. There you go. That just locked straight on that squirrel's eye just then. But I was literally framing a whole headshot. Now, obviously, the more cameras improve, the more technology comes out, the better it will be. Now, on the A7R, you literally have two options for the IAF, which is human and animal. Now, if you get the A7R5, it actually breaks it down a lot more to things like birds and wildlife. In a minute, one of those squirrels is going to knock over my camera, I swear it, over my uh, filming one. But yeah, so with improved technology, things will get better. I'm not saying that you literally you'll be able to 
have a squirrel eye AF. Um, it might be a bit too specific, but they might actually do small animals or, you know, they might have other programs that will allow them to actually utilise it better. Now, it could be a case that, that's the one with the tash. You're cute, I like you. Um, it could be a case that it's programmable, I think, because it's an AI. Go on, little guy. Because it's an AI, a lot of it is like learning and stuff as well. So it's getting there. Technology is definitely advancing in the right way. It kind of will take some of the, the element of the skill away from it. But to obtain really good photos, it will just make life so, so, so much easier. And it's, it has actually made my job easier today. And as I say, technology with the auto focusing systems and stuff is a lot better than it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago. As, as new cameras get released, it just improves. And while it might take some of the skill out of the photography, I think it potentially adds more fun to it because you're getting more keepers, you're getting more hits with the, with the shots. And if you get more hits with the shots, you're more likely to um, be out there capturing the pictures more rather than becoming disheartened. So yeah, anyway, I'm gonna wrap this up. <laughs> My camera just made another squirrel jump. I'm gonna wrap this up now because I'm getting hungry because I've not had any breakfast, as I say, whereas these guys have had plentiful. Um, and obviously as the day goes on, it will get busier and busier down there. I have seen an increase in dog walkers. A lot of them have been on the leads to be fair. So it's not been too shabby. Um, but yeah, if I see any more pictures or if I take any more pictures, it's not a case of seeing, it's a case of taking. Obviously I'll, here you go little guy. I'll pop them up for you after this. But yeah, obviously if you've liked this video, do give us the old thumbs up and feel free to drop us some comments as well because I have to say I'm considering doing more and more wildlife photography um, on this channel, not just squirrels. And I am planning on looking at potentially getting a wildlife photography lens. So if you want to, you can always head over to my Kofi page and actually make a donation towards me purchasing it because they ain't cheap. Let's put it that way. Um, and you know, it's my 40th this year in a couple of months. So yeah, feel free to get me a uh, early birthday present and uh, yeah, chip in towards my new lens fund. Um, <laughs> I am joking guys. Um, but yeah, dude, that's my camera bag. You don't want to go on there. Good lad. Um, yeah, so give us the old thumbs up, drop us some comments as well about if you do want to see more wildlife photography on the channel um because i love nature and i love wildlife as well so it gives me another excuse to be out more and making more films for this so yeah um drops obviously some subscribes as well you've got one you literally you greedy sausage i already had one in his, in his mouth yeah um yeah drop us some subscribes as well sorry they keep distracting me and uh yeah this is my account take care and be safe everyone Peace. Have you not got one? Have you not got one? Come on, buddy.